because then we can have a recording. Okay. So uh, Leslie and I are both constellations practitioners. And uh, do you want to say more about what that is? Always fun to define what constellations is. Yes, I actually, I, so my name's Leslie Nips. This is Rachel Alexandria for anyone joining in. Um, I'd be really interested. What's your best hit on defining constellations to a naive, utterly never heard it before? No, it's not about the stars. What's right. your What's your way of doing that? I'm really interested. Right. I love how you tossed that ball back to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, what I say is, this is my sort of my my patter. Constellations is a way of working with elements of any system. Uh, using objects or people or even uh, images of, of people in the system mm -hmm. um, in order to find out what is currently true at a deep level mm -hmm. and what healing wants to happen. Cool. That's what oh, I, I love say. that. I love that last bit, what wants to happen. That's really great. Yeah. So systems are anything, when I say systems, sometimes that's kind of like jargony. You know, it can be families, it can be a body, it can be groups, it can be organizations, it can be the world. Mm -hmm. uh, system is anything where mm -hmm. multiple components interact. So how do you define constellations to a unfamiliar audience? Yeah, I think I have two main ways of doing it, depending upon how, um, how um, sort of left-brained or right-brained they are um adjusted a little bit one is a little bit like yours um i appeal to the fact that we, we've become very accustomed to the fact that we all have a personal unconscious um we kind of we're all children of freud we all kind of take that for granted now um but that um organizational people are really aware that systems have an unconscious mm -hmm. um and that constellations is the best approach I've ever found to getting to the unconscious of systems, um, the invisible elements. Um, again, like you said, whether a business or a family. Um, I, I, I like that approach simply because it it, it works on an analogy of, of something that people are already, you know, kind of instinctively, we, we kind of a, a common understanding of what our personal unconscious is like. It's the things that make me angry when I don't want to be angry or that kind of thing. Um, right. The other approach I take actually doesn't describe the method very much, but I'll say something along the lines of um, all families suffer. It's part of being human and being alive. And a lot of that suffering we are able to integrate and deal with and honor at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, But a lot of it can't be for whatever reason. It was too big. It was too taboo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the break got too intense, whatever it was back there, and that those unresolved traumas linger as resonances in the system. Um, that we come into the family system, we pop in as innocent, as Bert Hellinger says, great in love and small in understanding, and mm -hmm. uh, feel that unresolved trauma, and and we sort of put our hands on our hips and go, I'll help. This whole mm -hmm. depression thing, I'll help with that. Um, Carry some of that. By, um, by, by trying to heal it by, by sharing in the trauma. And that um, this is very loving, but it doesn't work um, because the, the, the source of the suffering is actually over. And how do we help the system notice it's over um, so, that, nice. so that we can thrive which is all our ancestors really want for us um yeah so and you know there's probably two or three other ways uh depending upon the crowd i'm sure you 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 adjust it to the crowd a little bit i usually get the same crowd <laughs> <laughs> well i'm curious what 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 is the context in in which you generally use constellations these days i you know i use it I use it all over the place. Like I, I mean, I, I look for it everywhere. To me, right. constellations is also a lens um, through which I see how everything is interrelated and how things are are speaking to me. Mm -hmm. um, how the universe is speaking to me through what happens. Um, 
So, I mean, I do it with individual clients, you mm -hmm. know, like I sort of am sensing, you know, in anything that's going on in the moment, is this something we need to talk about? Is this something that needs a skill or an action? Is this something that needs energy work? Is this something that need that's like an ancestral piece that needs some constellation-y adjusting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or there's probably other things I think of, but I don't really do like an assessment like that. It just kind of something yeah. will rise from my tool yeah. belt and be in front of me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Like this. Do you, do you have a recent story of a particular time you were working with a client who had a particular uh, stuck thing um, and somehow the constellations framework was exactly what helped out? Or your favorite story of it it doesn't have to be recent right i'm trying to th i'm i'm trying to think of one um i know i did it the other day with um a leadership coaching client uh and I, i'm trying to get back in because i don't know if this happens to you but when i work i don't retain super well anymore yeah. i mean it's just you that know mostly yeah really useful yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's not mine to keep. And also, uh, I would have to work harder if I wanted to actually retain the data. Um, but I believe the way we got into it, I was doing some healing work for her in her office. And um, there was, uh, we were trying to release something is my, my guess, my foggy recollection. We were trying to release something in, in her that was kind of keeping her from being more successful. And um, so maybe she didn't want to disappoint people. Let's just say it was that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I just kind of had this feeling that I get sometimes when it's not, it's not a mental construct. It's not within the, the person themselves. Um, and I was like, who, who is it not okay with that you, that you do whatever it was, you know, who, who, with whom does that not feel okay? And she was kind of like, oh, you know, but I could tell she was, you know, people get in that place where they're resisting saying the obvious answer and because they, they don't want to say it because it's obvious. And they're like, there must be something more complicated than the same crap I've said to 80 people right. about my family problems. Right. No, it's really not again. Um, so she finally goes, well, I mean, I don't want it to be this, but I guess my dad. And I'm like, yeah, that's I was feeling the father energy. So I, I actually just I forget. I think there was a coaster on her desk. And I was just like, so here's your dad. <laughs> I propped it up against, I just had them have an interaction. And I propped it up against um, my water bottle, actually. And then later I was like, oh, look how he got resourced there, actually. I didn't even do all the resourcing setup of his ancestors, but apparently it just happened in the moment. And it was available uh, somehow. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I, I find the more I do work like this, the more things just shorthand themselves. Mm -hmm. Um. So they had this wonderful conversation where, you know, she was able to like give back a burden to him mm. and see that he was like, yeah, you don't need to do that for me. And I'll, my next session with her is actually tomorrow. So we'll see. Good. Yeah. We'll see how it went. I mean, that was just one of several things we did. Yeah. Yeah. But it, yeah. it you know, people have such loyalties to their parents, even as they'll simultaneously curse them in the next breath, they, they still are like, but I can't betray my family. I can't. You know, I, I would be a bad person if I were to let them down or or give them back the painful thing that I've been holding for them. It's really interesting for some people how they have such a self-identity of kind of, you know, they had an abusive or difficult family somehow of feeling like, no, I've, I pushed that away. I, I'm not loyal to my family. I'm just the opposite. Right. Um, and it's a really strong identity and understandably given the circumstances to enter into this field and discover that so much of that resistance is actually in a, a very unexpected expression of loyalty and love and belonging. Right. Right. And I always people tell... fight that one for a little it, while. <laughs> it's you and I'm like, Hey, you know, that's still, that's still codependent, you know, because you're relying on them to define you. You're saying, I, as long, I know who I am as long as I'm not that. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you, that's not independence. It's another way to belong. Another, <laughs> another way to belong. Yeah. Yeah. So what do ancestors have to do with blank? I know when we came up with this title, we had an idea. Mm -hmm. What 
what where are we going with that? I know we were gonna have it maybe a series about yeah. So like what do they have to do with money? Or what do they have, have to do, to do with, with business? Or what do they have to do with food and eating or physical health? Mm -hmm. Um is 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 some blank rising to the top uh for a conversation today? The two that strike me as interesting and and Marky, if you're hanging in there, I I'd love to know what's what's interesting to you. Yeah. How would you fill in that blank? Because I think questions would be helpful for us. Um, the two that strike me as interesting are money and food. Those both are like, huh? What do ancestors have to do with money? What do ancestors have to yeah. do? With yeah, I was gonna be like, look, I'm drinking some sort of sugar juice right now. <laughs> What do my ancestors have to do with that? Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. One of the, um, uh, I've done a few teleseries on ancestors and money. And one of the things that I like to do is take people through sort of a, a variation on one of the standard constellation meditations. And would you imagine yourself in a space and you see your parents and then their parents and then their parents. And after a very short while, the line gets very long. And um, that's sort of, that's straight from Bert Hellinger, our founder, that kind of imagery. Um, but then to begin just to sort of allow the impression, because you don't necessarily know specifically the histories of any of those people or a very few of them, but just get an impression of um, the, you know, who are the, who are the people who endured terrible poverty who are the people who had a lot? Who are the people who experienced betrayal or loss around money or who had it all stolen from them? Like, you know, Jews in the Holocaust, um, who perhaps did not so good things with money. Um, uh, you know, who had a lot and then through bad choices just suddenly, or the depression just lost it all. Um, and they get an impression of, of the different kinds of patterns. And then to bring to mind any particular problem they're having with money, if it's a lack of it, or they're always in debt, or they make a lot and then they lose it, or they had enough, but they worry anyway, the various things we can have with money. And, and, it, and to sort of get a sense of who in that motley crowd are they most resonating with. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'll say, is it on the left? Is it on the right? Is it 10 rows back? Is it real close up? Sometimes they know it's their Uncle Joe or who, you know, went to jail for embezzlement or something. But um, um, sort of notice some, something they seem to resonate more with and um, notice the love bond between themselves and those ancestors, um, even if they were quote unquote bad. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously constellations is usually a space without a lot of judgment about this stuff. But if they did, you know, immoral things with money mm -hmm. um, and um, and then, you know, just to, to find a way to include it all, to acknowledge this is where I got my life from. Um, these are my people. These are my ancestors. And some of the classic, um, you know, sentences of, uh, you know, I, I honor the dignity of your fate. Thank you for my life. Please bless me as I choose a different way. Um, and this is usually really eye-opening for people because, you know, we have, you know, pretty much every money course in the universe has you talk about what happened when you were a kid. You know, wh what were the rules in your family about allowance? And did your parents talk about money? And so we, we often have that kind of information handy. But the impression that they might have generations of, impoverished people that they're being loyal to or generations of people who um you know were oppressed and had money stolen from them that they might be in some loyalty to uh, it's often a really new and very tender and loving frame um for why the heck don't i have enough money or whatever the complaint is mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's powerful so how about you? Um, when is what is what is a uh, what is constellations help you kind of um, see different? I mean, there are sort of some standard ways we talk about money in our culture. Mm -hmm. 
um, and some of them useful and maybe some of them not as useful. Is is there something about constellations that's helped you think differently about money and money stuff with your clients? Um, I don't, I mean, the thing that's coming to me to share uh, is about the constellations conference last time I did a constellations and business topics. Oh, good. And, um, this, this was sort of a version of, of that. Uh, cause I, I had, I mean, I only, they only gave me like what an hour and a half or something at the conference. And yeah. so I, I, cause I was going to do like this big hole, you know, here's some pieces that you need to start up a business doing constellations. Right. But of course I, I actually don't remember all the things we did in that workshop, but I did it very, you know, experientially like, yeah. um, and I remember that a lot of the things we did, because there was so much anxiety in the room. There's so many people who yeah. love the work yeah. and are really stressed and scared and resentful that they're not making money with it. Or they, they're just, you know, I had, I had like longtime practitioners in that room and I had newbies and people who tried and failed and, you know, failed, you know, um, and one of the exercises I had us do was I had somebody stand up and represent you know, an unnamed representative, but I had them represent money. And I had everybody, you know, have their own experience of it. And then I actually had them take turns being money and seeing what that was like for all of them. And it was interesting how their, I saw some people go through some really interesting healing journeys with that. Because mm. they started out scared or they started out saying, you're evil to money, you know? Wow. Um, and then, you know, being it like, cause, cause everyone is a representative, you know, when you're, when you represent a really big concept like that, my experience is generally that you, um, you're, you're pretty neutral, you know, usually if, it, if it's your, like a really big concept with a group, it just kind of feels neutral. Right. Like I'm not, I'm noticing that I have awareness, but I'm not holding emotionality most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, so for them to just get that embodied sense of like, oh, yeah, money's not, money's not a villain. Yeah. Um, so that would be more my, my experience yeah. of. Yeah. So the unconscious systemics of us and money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're very good at like picking up the thematics and, and, and bringing it into that language. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I like it. I was saying you're very good at it. I. You know, because I'm sort of like, well, there was a story. I think it has meaning. <laughs> hey, in the particulars, you know, as he, what is it? Um, as below, uh, as above, below. What's the saying? Mm -hmm. um, as 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 above, so below, yeah. or as below, so above. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. as you're talking, you're reminding me one of my teachers, Michelle Masters, here in the Bay Area. She does a whole weekend on. She calls it Money Magic. Um, and it's just a whole bunch of constellation stuff she's created. And one thing she has all the participants do is is split up into pairs. And one person is themselves and the other person is money. So they do nice. their own dyads. And then they switch so they can have the experience. And she says something I, I really found very useful. And I think it's the same thing you said, but it's in a slightly different language. It's very Michelle language. It's if money shows up as anything like has any attitude, it's probably a parent. <laughs> so, you know, if you're with a representative who's standing in for money and money's going, you're not any good. And da, 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 she says, yeah, you might want to see if it's mom or dad. Right. And probably right. dad. And then when you put in a representative <laughs> for dad and for money, then, then dad can now be dad and money can just be money. And uh -huh. the simple healing is just going, oh, they're different. I've had them super confused for a long time, right. which is right. uh, really interesting. But I love that sentence. If money shows up with any attitude, it's probably representing something else. Something else. <laughs> well, it's sort of like core self, right? Like that's from my, my training as a therapist. Like I work, I've worked a lot with people on parts work. Yeah. Which constellation is great? Way. Yeah, right. So I, whenever I tell people, you know, hey, you know, find your core self and like bring that up, and and they'll be like, and I'll say, how are you feeling? And they're like pissed or sad or scared. I'm like, that's not core self. 
Yeah. Or self is not pissed or sad or scared. I mean, you know, I, I know it's in there and there's yeah. also something else. There's this other layer. So it's yeah. kind of, this, it's similar. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, my, if money shows up and it's looking pissed, probably not money. Right. And the nice, the, the nice movement, both in what you're describing and in constellations is that if we split off, so now we have a representative for father and for money, not only do you have the, the, the advantage of money now just getting to be money, which is useful, but now you've included dad explicitly rather than unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Even if dad was some crazy monster or something, and there's still work to be done in terms of that relationship, um, it's it feels good to the system to have explicitly included it as itself, as father, rather than as some amalgam of money and father. It's almost mm -hmm. like in the unconscious of the system, by having this complex relationship with money, we're trying to find a place to hold our father in our heart. Um, but it's it's an unuseful way because mm -hmm. money just needs to be money. Money mm -hmm. needs to be something that we can earn and pay the rent and save and, yeah, and, and not, you know, have a good place for father. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it, it becomes a way to include everything. I, I, I've had some teachers that say that the, the the simplest way of understanding constellations is it it makes it sounds super simple we include everything that's supposed to be included but if if various elements are merged or upside down or squished or split off then they're actually not properly included as themselves right so constellations allows them to be included as themselves uh, in their full dignity, even if they are, you know, in, in a sense, human and problematic in some way. <laughs> um, so money and food was the other one. Food was the other one. And I see we got joined again by Linda, yeah. I believe. Linda, hey. Thanks for coming back. Um, and Linda, I, I said this to our attendee, Marky, who is... I hope that she can hear us okay because she hasn't said anything. Um, if you have anything you want to fill in the blank with what, is an what ancestors have to do with blank, we'd be happy to chat about that. Yeah, and, and just uh, go ahead and use that message thing on the right-hand side. Um, mm -hmm. And we just had Sharon join us as well. Hey, yay. Yeah. Great. New people. Yeah. We just had this nice little chat about yeah. ancestors and money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, listen, it might be cool. I don't know if Blab does this, but wouldn't it be cool to like have people in the windows and then be able to move them around? Ooh. Const Constellation style. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yay. Hey, Linda's eating Linda's dinner. dinner on the topic of food. <laughs> on the topic of food. Hey, see, everything is a constellation. That's there what I was go. saying. So can I share you my favorite constellation story around food? Of course. Because I use this, it's actually when I have people who are thinking about purchasing my services and you've talked to, in the abstract long enough and you actually need to give them an example so they know what the heck you're talking about. Right. Um, so I had a client who had a compulsive overeating issue, mm -hmm. um, which as you know, I mean, that's just, that's a really difficult experience to have. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we part of some constellations work is doing a family interview to get a little bit of a sense of what's going on in the family tree. And she had had um, uh, uh, grandparents who had barely survived the siege of Leningrad. Now, if you know that story, it's one of the great stories of starvation and famine of the last hundred years. Um, the Germans surrounded the city, and then there was like, I don't know, something like three years where they had no food going into the city. They were down to eating, oh, man. They were down to eating shoe leather, and there was a, a lot of death. I mean, millions starved to death. It was, it was quite an extraordinary story. Her grandparents survived it. To love them and include their suffering, she has their hunger. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, she lives in a world where she has plenty of food, right? right. It's, it's, right. It, there's actually no starvation issue at stake. Mm -hmm. But to love them, um, she, was, she had their hunger. It was so tender. It was so beautiful. Um, 
and and it doesn't always happen this way, but just as a means of um, uh, just sort of learning that and getting that was about fifty percent of 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 healing the uh, the compulsiveness. There were some yeah. other things we had to do as well to kind of get the other fifty percent. Um, but mm -hmm. just that awareness that what, you know, this hateful thing, this compulsive overeating that was making her sick and she couldn't control and made her feel terrible was love was right. so huge for her. So it, um, we've all got kind of um, case studies that kind of encapsulate our work um, better than others that are more complicated and open-ended. Um, right. I know. I know. That's one I really always like to share. That's a great one. Yeah, that's a cool story. I remember this isn't a constellation I did, and this isn't on the topic of food, but it just makes me think of like one of those stories where you're just like, oh, so great. Um, it was a constellation Mark Johnson led because um, that's who I was I was uh, training with. Uh, Sharon, oh, Sharon wants you to retell that story. Once okay. I'm looking at the comments. She came in in the middle. Okay, well, let's hear Rachel's story first. Okay. <laughs> this is also recorded, Sharon, so you yeah. can, you'll be able to go back and re-listen. Re yeah. Ask us um, for the recording. We don't even know how to share that yet, but we'll find out. We'll figure <laughs> it out. It's, it's probably just on this. I don't know. Um, so there was somebody who came, and I, I mean, let me check and see. Do I have permission to share that story? I'm not going to share names. Yeah. No. Somebody who came, who came to a constellation of Mark Johnson's, and the issue was... Um, that she had chronic nightmares and they were terrible. Like they just were like waking her up all the time. And I, I don't remember her describing no. the, the content, but it, they were awful. Like that was so much so that she came to a workshop and said, please help me heal from this. And I don't remember the, the specifics of the constellation either, but I remember as he brought in people, Finally, there was there was a I think it was a grandmother, a great aunt, or you know a couple a couple generations back, a woman who had been committed. She'd been crazy, mm -hmm. she, or had mental illness, yeah. or you know back in that day and age, who knows, right? Like yeah. maybe not. Maybe she was a shaman and they just couldn't handle it. Who yeah. knows? Um, but out of that loyalty to her, yeah, as you would say it, out of like like honoring her suffering. So that's what was bringing the nightmares like that. The night terrors were that connection right. to that right. great aunt and, yeah. and like seeing that was just so, Ooh, you know, oh, um, yeah. uh, and, uh, and what I heard secondhand was that that client later reported that they were gone. Once yeah. that was resolved, they yeah. just, that was like one of those one and done. Right. Oh, just almost the inside itself is, is, is very powerful. For some clients, there needs to be a little bit more. Oh, um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And what you're, you're making me think of, because this is something that's been coming up for me a lot lately, is that this place of holding their suffering, which is a gesture of love and an attempt to heal, mm -hmm. but nonetheless ineffective in this regard, because it happened a long time ago, mm -hmm. um, holds our ancestors as victims. Yeah, as these and often in in a in a sort of an objective sense, they certainly were. I mean, mm -hmm. you understand um, if you describe their situation, that may have, you know, slaves or victims, you know, uh, whatever. Right. Um, right. But it holds it in our heart as victims and us as the potential heroes. And mm -hmm. the reframe often for people uh, in these situations is for the ancestors to hear their spirit saying. We are not victims. We were strong. See our strength. We endured. Thank you for seeing our suffering. Mm -hmm. But hold us as strong. Um, we sent life onto you, mm -hmm. little one. <laughs> um, and that reframe, um, especially for people with spectacular stories of suffering, a lot of my African American clients. You know, they've been told their whole lives about the story of slavery because it's such a compelling national story. Um, and to feel those those ancestors as strong, as mm -hmm. endured long enough to have children and 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 until they birth us somehow mm -hmm. or another mm -hmm. um, is often just such a relief. 
um, to so for your client to instead of her poor what was it great aunt or something like that yeah yeah poor grandmother who was locked in an asylum um, how wh what did she endure where right. was her strength in that story and then she can turn to this poor woman who had this terrible experience and ask for blessing and ask for life mm. yeah. Um, same I thing. see that Sharon Sharon LeWinter is saying that she did in a workshop with Dietrich. I think you're saying Klinghardt? Kling, Klingbot. I don't know. I don't know that Dietrich. Oh, yeah, I don't know that name. Okay. Yeah. I know Dietrich. I know Dietrich Klinghardt, right? Isn't that how you say his name? I don't know that name either. Oh. Uh, I think that's who trained my trainer. Okay. Yes. Yes, Klinghardt. Yes. Okay. There we go. Yeah, Sharon. That's who trained my trainer. That's one of my trainer's trainers. And your trainer is <laughs> Mark Johnson. Johnson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, Kirsten was on. Right. Right. And the gaggle of Seattle folk. I am one of the many Seattle constellations yeah. facilitators. Yeah. 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 My lineage, um, of course, is through NLP Marin, which would be Michelle Masters and um, Carl Buchheit, but their connection to the roots are. Um, Oh, give me a second. It's a woman. Oh, I'm embarrassing myself. I have her name right on the tip of my tongue. Oh, I know how that happens. <laughs> It'll come to me halfway through or right after. Um, of course. But she was one of the uh, early folks who came to Northern California. And a, a, okay. a, a funny bit, um, B, B, Beatrice, Beatrice, Beatrice? No. Uh, anyway, uh, it'll come to me. It's slowly <laughs> making its way through the neurons. Um, she um, had a novelty. It's not so much of a novelty anymore, I know, but back then it was of doing blind constellations. Um, oh, I love this. You know, the original format being, will you be my mother? Will you be my father? Um, sure. Um, but she was the first one to really come upon how to set up represent blind and so mm -hmm. pretty much everyone around here is uh does it that way uh, oh and then and then every once in a while someone will show up who was trained somewhere else or attended someone else's stuff and they're like hmm. and of course i'm going well isn't that how it's always done <laughs> <laughs> that's the funny thing about constellations you know and I, I see that we're getting some constellations fans um yeah. which is cool uh the funny thing to me is how, you know, it's probably like religion. When, once you have a lineage, everyone says, oh, this is the way you pray, right? This is the way service is conducted. Oh, you're supposed to have mass like this, right? right? You're supposed to present it that way. You're supposed to run it this way. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, something I appreciate about my trainer was there was a fair amount of permission like as long as you're doing it with respect and there's certain kinds of boundaries that are always in integrity you do it how you do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, so it's it's interesting when when different people visit different constellations lands and they're like that's not the custom it's not constellations although i i have to say um nlp marin is kind of a weird space in a lot of ways and it it doesn't connect up with the larger constellation world very much. And of course it's got, it's grounded in NLP. NLP came first and then constellations. So when I went to the first constellations conference, which was in the Bay uh, that I got to in 2011, which was in the Bay area, mm -hmm. I thought I was going to find out all the ways I was doing it either weird or wrong, depending upon oh, my, funny. my, the state of my self-esteem. Um, and then I went to all these workshops, um, you know, Heinz Stark, Bill Mannell, uh, Francesca Mason Boring, all these amazing people. And I totally recognized what they were doing. It, right. it was not weird. We were all doing the same thing. There were, there were a few tweaks, you know, here mm -hmm. and there. Some of it due to the personality of the practitioner, some of it the lineage. Um, right. Some sometimes it's because they're good in another modality and they brought that in, um, but um, it was such a relief to me. <laughs> We're all doing kind of the same thing. 
we're all doing kind of the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I think there's this story in the constellation world that these people are doing it right and those people are doing it wrong. And there is. All that sort of stuff. And I'm like, no, we're all kind of doing the same thing. Right. Um, and I've seen this, I've now seen a lot of different practitioners do a lot of different facilitating. And I always recognize, even if there's something specific I personally don't like, mm -hmm. or a style I don't like, um, <laughs> I still recognize we're up to the same thing. And that, that's been very reassuring. It's created a sense of community that I quite like. Nice. Yeah, and you I'm are wondering, getting dark, just to let you know. I know, I am. So I'm wondering, I'm going to ask a question, and then I'm going to go adjust my lighting. Yep. Um, I'm wondering from our, our viewers, is there anything that yep. you want to you want to fill in the blank with? You know, this this yep. title is, what do the ancestors have to do with blank? Right. Uh, and we'd love to hear your suggestions or um, just your particular questions, because mm -hmm. we're here, we're, we're you know, not here to just entertain each other. Like we're here as a resource for whoever is curious about mm -hmm. how our relationship with the ancestors is affecting our current life. I would also like to know um, if you're willing right to, um, to reveal yeah. yourself, um, who are constellation facilitators here um, and, and who are um, fans um, and who's here going, I never heard of constellations before. I saw that ancestors word and, I showed up. Um, so, so Sharon's a fan, and Elite has never heard of it. Sorry, I have to take my glasses off to read this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, Marky's a fan, excellent. and Sharon's a constellator. Linda, uh, no help. I'm sorry, me. Linda. Sorry, it says help for pains. I forgot yeah. whose name was what. I don't know. Like, and that is Linda. Of, that is Linda. Yeah. yeah. Couple fans, a constellator, somebody who's like, what? I don't know. Um, at the very beginning of this conversation, when I think it was just me and Leslie and maybe Marky was here, um, we, we were defining what constellations is. I'll give my brief, just to catch everybody, yeah. excuse me, catch everybody up. Uh, the way I describe it is it's a way of working with people or objects or even in a mental construct to work with the objects the, the, the components is a better word. The components of a system, family system, organizational system, body as a system, uh, to see what, what what's currently true in that system and to see what wants to happen for greater healing. So it's a way to access the depth of what's going on and 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 let that depth speak because at, at those deep spaces we can actually hear very simple and clear truths and we can move much faster we can we can bridge gaps it's kind of like a little wormhole sometimes yeah yeah awesome yeah i really love that feeling of um it gives us an actual tool to work with the invisible structures um it's really nice yeah. Sharon asked, does constellation work believe that our ancestors still exist in spirit or it's just family patterns that keep recurring? Ask 10 different facilitators, get 10 yeah. different answers on that yeah. one. <laughs> what I find from working, I mean, I, I have a few different modalities that I work yeah. in. And I guess what I would say, I actually learned this from dance. There's a, there's a really amazing form of dance called Nia, N-I-A. And I have I had a really great teacher, and there was like a whole training institute and people who created it. But at some point, it became clear to me that my teacher was the modality itself. Oh yeah, sure, yeah. And so, um, like, I totally honor my physical embodied teachers yeah. in Nia and in constellations and all the other sure. things. But ultimately, the soul of the modality is the thing that I learn from. So. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's a both and, I, you know, I mean, me personally, I think we can communicate with our ancestors. There can be current real time healing and connection with them. So would you say that's there in spirit? Yeah. 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 I, you know, metaphorically, I would. Um, yeah. I mean, I can, I can tell you about things from my own life that aren't necessarily connected to constellations, yeah. but it all lives within me of, yeah you know, an object being in a place where no one else could have put it 
and I knew it was from an ancestor. That things like that, where I'm like, yeah, was there yeah. somebody physically? Like, yeah. Did the objects move themselves? I had, you know what I mean. It's quite a nice thing about constellations is that you don't have to buy into a specific metaphysics. Yeah. Um, you can actually be an atheist and be mm -hmm. just fine as a mm -hmm. as a constellation facilitator. My background's Christianity, and it's interesting. The first time I saw a constellation. I, it made me realize the um, the communion of saints was real, and not mm. an interesting idea. What is the communion of saints? I don't know. In Christianity, means. and more in the more towards the Catholic end of things rather than the Protestant mm -hmm. end of things, but it's it's this field. They wouldn't use that language, but it's a field where um, all of the souls of everyone who ever lived reside in. In 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 the um, in in the sense in the heart of God uh, in the kingdom somehow, oh. and that um, through communion yeah. in this particular sense, so eating the bread and the wine, um, all of us become invisibly present to each other. So we're sitting down mm. for a meal, and the mystical body of the saints all become present to us. Oh, cool. It's a very lovely um, idea. Um, and I was watching a constellation and I'm going, oh, that's not just theory. Look. <laughs> nice. um, it's interesting, though. I also um, I, I have a physics background as well. I've, I'm sure you have 10 different backgrounds as well. And so I actually enjoy a physics metaphor or even you can take it literally which is that everything exists in a field as information. You know, you and me and my chapstick and our ideas and history and, um, you know, everything exists as information in a field um, so that the information called my father, or my mother, or my mother's mother or the Holocaust or um, mm -hmm. the event in which my grandmother's family all died in a fire um, mm -hmm. exists as information in that field. And mm -hmm. through using bodies or coasters or uh, uh, pieces of paper in the blind format, um, we gain ac access to that information. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it's uncanny the information we get. It's, it, I mean, I'm sure even now you can sometimes be amazed at like, Huh, this actually works. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? The longer I do metaphysical work, I think at some point I surrendered a little bit of the astonishment because it was surrendering some of my incredulity. Yeah. And that allowed it to be more powerful. Mm -hmm. And I kind of miss I kind of miss the astonishment sometimes. Um, every time every once in a while a, a, a representative will just say the words of mm. what a client said her mother always used to say and we'll kind of look at each other and go, yeah it's always that that's just fun. happened yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice I, my favorite one ever was a long time ago doing a, a little a little tiny constellation for a client who was trying to figure out their work and they were trying to decide whether to do computer programming tai chi or nlp okay mm. so i put in a representative for each one of those and mm -hmm. it was blind again it was blind and the, the representative for Tai Chi, who did not know what they were, what they were. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, stood, I can't do it on this camera, but stood in a, a Tai Chi pose and started mm -hmm. doing those movements and went, I don't know why, but this just feels good. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Good. And, and me and the client are looking at each other going, e Hello. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the guy That's had awesome. the representative had never done Tai Chi, had no right. idea why he was making these movements. Oh yeah. So um I actually have become I well, I really still enjoy being representative myself. Oh yes. Um, and it's I, I have I have the probably the best memories and the funniest stories of those because I the, I wasn't facilitating, so I could remember better. Um I remember one where uh, they, the facilitator was doing a constellation around astrology. It was like North and South nodes thing. He was co-facilitating with somebody else. Um, and it was kind of like one of those walking journey. Everyone was doing their own thing, but then they did a specific constellation for somebody. <laughs> I don't remember what they set up, but we were const you know, we were like 
astrological components really? that we were being right. set up. And he, and I was sort of standing there and then I just kind of wanted to be like doing this, you know, like with my hands, like this. And, and he comes over and he's like, how are you feeling for yourself? And I said, pointy. <laughs> and he was like, pointy. <laughs> but that was, I mean, I just felt so. I get it. Geometric. Get it. You know what I mean? I just was like, I'm pointing at things point. like that's, yeah, it's, it sort of is the same sort of thing. Like. I'm I'm pointy, and it's a lo- it is a lovely feeling to feel the essence of being pointy, or yeah. the essence of being this feels good. It and is a very entertaining feels good in, in an odd way when we step into perpetrators, because mm. the experience is still so pure, it's so strong, and mm-hmm. it's it's useful to have these experiences. It it it, it often mm-hmm. takes away the sense of oh I'm like this and you're like that and we're not the same. Right. We're not allowed, and yeah, like yeah. Step into an authentic perpetrator who did something awful, and go, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. What this experience is like? It's it's not that foreign to me, right? Really, I, I'm noticing a few things over here on the side. We might want to address. Sharon's asked if we're both from California. Where are you from, uh, Rachel? I, well, from is from yeah. is a hard question, right? <laughs> I lived in California when I was pretty young. Um, and I, right now I'm in Seattle. Right. I may, I may be moving to California. Okay. In the next six months. Well, that, um, we would be happy, although it's a big state. So I shouldn't assume you're, it's going to make, you're, it's going to actually bring you that much closer. Um, yeah. Well, I, well, it's going to be closer than Washington. Yeah. And I'm in Oakland, California now. Um, I grew up on the East Coast, but um, there are constellation facilitators all over the country. Um, there are, as well as uh, people like us who can do things by Skype and stuff like that as well. We can, um, and I'm I'm sort of curious if we're going to end up New Jersey in the house. You know, I found out that I'm old enough and white enough that now it's I'm like a cheesy, you know, mom style. If I do. In the house. I have a friend who's in her 20s and she's like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, Alicia, when you do it, that you're you're totally rocking it. But well, I'm apparently just, I, I'm... I was in New Jersey for a little while. So there's South Jersey, there's the Shaw, there's North Jersey, very different places. <laughs> yeah, very different places. Linda's representing Canada. Where in Canada, Linda? Oh, I know where she is. Uh, you're in Ottawa, Linda? Where are you? Uh, North Jersey, is in North Jersey oh, no. Ottawa, the capital. And I just want to acknowledge Linda shared something really touching. Um, I'm Linda. I talk now to my par- grandparents more than I did when they were alive, but I was young when they died and I live very far away. I do feel like they have guided me and helped me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Sharon's from New York City. There we go. But I, I really like that because the, the focus in constellations can often be on what's that troubled, suffering ancestor that I'm entangled with. Mm. And we forget that we're actually, there are a lot of resourceful, supportive, blessing ancestors who are often also entangled with, but in, in a positive way, um, mm-hmm. who we have special bonds with. And sometimes we don't even know it. Um, I'll be with a client and all of a sudden it becomes really clear that they're grandmother's sister um has been looking out for her um so um thank you for bringing that up linda um alicia was just saying she just (laughs) resolved things with her grandpa and i was like in the constellation or in real life i mean not like constellation not real life but uh oh alicia's calling in let's let's talk with her okay see that's something you know as the originating host Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. So I, um, through Periscope, I met Dana Garrison. Okay. And she is the one who did this free webinar. And I'm like, free? Okay, cool. I'll go free. And I I had no idea because she really didn't announce it that way. She kind of just said free webinar. And I'm like, okay, I'm there. You're nice. I like you. Okay. And I was floored. Because I had, let me just fix my thing. Um, <laughs> I'm currently studying um, Think and Grow Rich. I do Hanel's Keys. I do Augmentino. I have a definite major purpose, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty like, 
like, hey, I'm doing really good. You know, awesome. But there's something. And she said, do you feel stuck? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of still do. And um, when she started, I had no, this is like blindsided me. I had no idea. It, it was so shocking to me. But when I was done, I was like, this is awesome. Like this was the piece, <laughs> the last little piece that was like kind of missing. And when she, she went to this whole thing where, you, you know, imagine that your, your grandpa, well, I was speaking with my grandpa. Grandpa was an alcoholic. He won the lottery, won $10,000, spent it on his drinking buddies, was abusive mm -hmm. towards my grandmother. And I hated bars because I hated that my gr grandfather was an alcoholic. And mm -hmm. I adore my grandmother. Still mm -hmm. wear her bracelet every single day. She died when oh. I was seven. I never liked him. Because yes. I adored my grandmother and he, yes. and he, you know, and they didn't physically abuse her. I don't think it was more emotional. So it wasn't like a horrible, terrible, evil man, but he was an alcoholic. And so I was like, I'm never drinking. And because and only to find out that it's not just the alcohol, but it's the addictive nature. And you can have an addictive nature with anything. You can have an addictive nature with your dog. You can have I mean, like, it's just the, the nature. <laughs> so that was really shocking. So yesterday, I was, no, it was two days ago, I think it was, Dana did it with me, but she didn't come, she didn't say constellations or whatever you guys are saying, but I saw ancestors and I put two and two together and I thought, maybe it's the same, let me listen. And it mm. sounds like, and you had said, <clears throat> Leslie, that she studies with, she studied She's with you. She's a colleague of mine here in the Bay Area, we just went to the same school. Love, super yeah, love. Sure. And like being a person who I, I consider myself, through a lot of work and study um, to be a little bit more connected than, you know, the average Joe. I'm not saying I'm awesome or I'm like perfect or anything like that. You're but allowed like, to be I've, awesome. I've studied it. You know, studied Think of Our Rich last year for like 12 weeks or 13 weeks with a program called Go 90 Grow with Mark Januski, who's also known as the lazy, world's laziest networker. Um, so I did that for a while, and then I started doing, oh, thank you, um, uh, Master Keys. That's his latest thing. So it's Hanel, uh, Think and Grow Rich with Napoleon Hill, and Ogbandino, and then My Definite Major Purpose. So he has us, like, reading our definite major purpose three times, and Ogbandino once, and the, and the blueprint, blah, blah, blah. it's like all this stuff. So I'm, like, retraining my brain major big time, and this was just like, but you know what? I shouldn't be shocked. Because I'm working so closely with my sit time and meditation and I'm, and I'm reading all these things and I'm really getting into it, I shouldn't be so surprised that the universe is leading me to unlock a key that was locked door before. So I'm just here because of Dana. Very, I'm actually going to be putting her on my Blab show. I want to interview her. Cool, um, cool. I have a little show called Blab With Me, Alicia B. And I'm a singer. I have seven children. I live in New Jersey. I'm actually 47. Um, my oldest is 24 and my youngest is eight. So I've got a lot of things going on. Like I do weddings, funerals, mostly in the Catholic church, but I am mm -hmm. intuitive. And some people might say I'm psychic. Um, I do talk to the other side. Um, I do have clear audience. Um, mm -hmm. but being a singer in a Catholic church, it's kind of hard to be like, Hey, I'm psychic. <laughs> it's just do, you know, of, do you know of Teresa Caputo? Yes, I love her. Isn't she great? Teresa, love her. Love her. She's, she's <laughs> I'm like, let me just drive to her house because she's just love her. And she's Catholic too. Yeah, that's um, why I brought her up. Yeah, she's she's a dolly face. I would love to go see her, but it's been fun watching her show. But honestly, mm -hmm. Blab and Periscope, I haven't really been watching TV between the two of them. It's just too much no. juice. <laughs> Too much juice, too much education, too much fun here. Oh my gosh. If I'm not learning something about myself, I'm learning something about how to, how to function in this modality of live streaming. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really awesome. So I'm even going to be doing a jewelry show tomorrow night on Blab. Oh, fun. Yeah. I actually, well, this is actually this is nice. This is Leslie and my, well, this is my second live Blab and this is Leslie's my first. Is it your first? You're a virgin? That's why I messed it up when I started. <laughs> didn't mess anything. Oh, I totally messed we, up. We had oh, some. Uh, you, know, had but, you know what's so funny? Because I have this thing called Minicam, and it allows like a little screen thing to go across the bottom. I thought, oh, how cool. 
Well, I didn't come to find out that many cam sometimes stops my whole entire system and I have to use my phone and I'm like, ah, scrambling because I love the way this looks and I love the way I have it set up and I love that you can hear me. I don't mind doing it on my phone, but it doesn't look as good as this. Mm. So I love this. It's, I've been on Blab for 50 days. Um, I've done, I have about 22 replays. And like this week alone, last two days I did six Blabs. That's all. Um, you are you are becoming a professional blabber. I took a nap along that. <laughs> well, and in that context, <laughs> uh, Rachel and I are kind of hoping that this might become a series. Yeah. I love it. What do ancestors have to do with money, with food, with health, it. with relationships? I kind of like leaving it blank. What do you think, Leslie? I, I think I think when well, it's I blank. It because you know, well, I mean, hmm. Or what do what do ancestors have to do with my life today would be great mm -hmm. uh, because I I honestly knew that there was an issue with my grandpa, um, but I had no idea that how I would feel once he I was able to stand in his shoes and look at me with love mm. because he always used to, I would drive him crazy I'm a talker and my grandfather would always yell at me to be like. Are you going to talk? Or are you going to eat? And he would have his big bottle of wine and he was always grumpy, mm. grumpy, grumpy. And, you know, it's kind of just like I've always, I always like being like my grandmother. Oh my God. I wear, like I said, I talk to her every day, I wear her bracelet every day. And my father, I, um, my, it was so funny. My, I think it was my son. He said, You're grandpa's favorite because he, his mother had seven kids. She was pregnant before she was married. And so were you. And I'm like, oh, I am like, oh. <laughs> it's just so much fun, but I adore my grandmother. She's with me every, every day. And I never was proud of my grandfather because to me, he was the drunk alcoholic who wasted his money and abused my grandmother. Yeah. So it was and beautiful to come yeah. to resolution with that and, to, awesome. and to, to allow him to love me and allow myself to love him and feel proud of him. That was awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that story with us. Yeah. Thank you. Now the other side is my mother's, my grandmother on my mother's side, never mm -hmm. knew her. Nobody will really tell me the story. My grandfather who was married to her is dead. And I never got to know anything. I've seen two pictures of her and that is it. Mm -hmm. And so that connection is like, now that I've learned about this with my grandpa, now I can try grandma of course you can because she's I, she's you know, I feel yeah. i feel very close to her and it's a matter of fact like my i have okay my mom comes from ecuador so i'm ecuadorian and i'm mm -hmm. italian um, my grandfather was an incredible entrepreneur ran very successful uh furniture making business where he would make this beautiful european gorgeous furniture he traveled the world he always had money he was so generous i love and adore my grandfather my grandmother though died i think the year i was born and so i never got to know her and so one day when i was a teenager we would go frequently i would go every seven years to ecuador one year when i went my grandpa and if i'm taking too much time please let me know and i'll, and I'll leave <laughs> Yeah, um, give, us, give us the the cliff notes version yeah right. so I, I go to the jungle in ecuador i see that there are poor kids there and i feel like wow i didn't i wasn't here on you know by mistake so um i always wanted to have a foundation call it julia's hope because my grandmother was julia and make it in her honor but i would love to be able to communicate with her because i just i just want to know i don't know i just want to i just never knew i feel deprived mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and you, 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 you have said you're Catholic, so that whole communion of saints framework kind of works for you? Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was cool for me, too. Um, so, yeah, she's, you know, she's fundamentally no different from your grandfather on the other side. You can, you can connect with her. Um, yeah. She's there, to. I mean, I'm sure Rachel and I, with even just a little bit of reach of our intention, can feel her. And I do. Probably. I feel her with you. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's nice. It's that's nice really nice. Yeah, I just, you know, but to, I never did that. I never even thought to do something where I'm sitting, she's standing, she's, stand, you know, she's, you know, I'm, she's looking at me, I'm looking at her. Yeah. And to be able to talk with her, I think, I guess it was easy for me to do it with my grandpa because I knew him. Yeah. I have no basis. So how do you, how do you like speak to an ancestor that you have no connection with whatsoever physically? 
I would say, I mean, so you're asking, um, what I would offer is you already, like you say, people already call you psychic. You already have the ability. Um, and not, that's, you know, anyone can do this, but you're already primed for it. So I would just say, Hey, you know, spirit, pure and holy, please help me to hear more from this grandmother, mm -hmm. you know, I, like purely and solely her. Like you want to set healthy, healthy psychic boundaries. Absolutely. You don't want to hear from anything. No, I've uh, dragged one home. I, I'm a funeral singer and I dragged one home with me one day. Yeah, don't do that. It was bad. When I went into uh, the, so, lady, the lady who was helping me get rid of it, she's like, you smell like death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, it's always it's always helpful to, to be really clear and specific for my highest and greatest good, the true good and the beautiful. I'd like to start hearing from this grandmother and say her name and then, you know, just remain open. Okay. Another right. couple of thoughts that just come to mind. Um, again, you're, you're sort of a ritualist, so this works for you. For the more Protestant-minded, it doesn't work as well. But, um, you know, if, if you set up an altar with something that either literally is a mm. part of her lineage or it just mm -hmm. something symbolically is, a rock or a picture or flower or whatever, just so you mm. have something to kind of connect with rather than just kind of empty space in a way right. and just um, sort of just say okay um this flower represents my grandmother and i i promise something's gonna happen you just need to kind of trust what shows up so if you start feeling sad or happy or angry or nervous or joyful or blank or whatever that that's actually the part of the interaction actually just just choose that that's part of the information um and then beyond that if for some reason it's it's stuck and not flowing the way you'd like it to um and in the way that rachel and i know is actually possible for you um then there could be something that you need a little help with so find someone sure. to give you some help absolutely um, you got constellators all over the place you got dana you got us there are other people um, sometimes just having another person to kind of go, oh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and kind mm -hmm. of feel and see why, for whatever reason, it's not flowing the way you'd like it to. It was just amazing. Like, I felt revived and renewed and excited. And I felt like, okay, like, it was just so, so cool. And I have my 22-year-old son who identifies with him. And he loves, he, he said he calls himself an alcohol enthusiast. <laughs> and it works he loves good wine. And he loves he works as a, he works as a waiter, um, and he loves good wine and bourbon. And I mean, he really loves like he really does love it. It's not just that he's you know drinking. Um, mm -hmm. So he but he identifies with my my grandfather, and he said, "I think your grandpa haunts me." And I was just like, "Ooh, yeah." I was like, well, "I think Rachel and I would like is for to take out the haunts and put in inspires." Yeah, exactly. And that's that. So that's so that exercise that I did with Dana kind of like gives me such a different positive outlook about my grandpa instead of only focusing on what he did wrong. Mm -hmm. I was able to see that he did try his best mm -hmm. within the realm of his life. And that that's was, beautiful. I'll throw out one other thing. This may or may not be relevant, but um, and we're probably gonna have to wrap it up fairly soon because we've gone a little over an hour here. But um, um, uh, Bert Hellinger, the founder of this work, he likes to make these grand generalizations. Um, and he's the first to say you shouldn't always stick with generalizations. But I've ha I'm having the impression that it might be relevant, so I'm just gonna say it and let you take responsibility with whether it lands or not. But he says addiction um, is almost always about reaching for the father you could not have. Hmm. It's replacement for the father. Um, either literally a father who wasn't around or somehow a father who was not available um, in, in some way. And so if we see his addiction or anybody's addiction as their distorted expression of love for somebody they couldn't have. Hmm. Right? Well, that's certainly not my son's issue because my husband is with him all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, he is super dad. I mean, but I think that's because his mom died when he was 11 and he saw his dad do everything. So he's very involved with his boys. Um, 
that might, but that might have been an issue for my grandpa. That's and what I'm really thinking. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, I'm not speaking about anyone else. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. 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 That's Although awesome. loss of a mother is also keen and has its consequences as well. Oh, believe that me. That makes sense for my dad. My what? alcoholic and. He was, you know, definitely missing both of his parents and especially his father. So it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. The thing I always say is that if, if we're the child of somebody, a parent who lost a parent, mm -hmm. um, fundamentally didn't have a parent, um, we grow up feeling that hole in our parent. Mm -hmm. The fact that they have a mother shaped, I call it a mother shaped hole or a father shaped hole. And we try and fill it. Mm hmm. And so a really beautiful move in constellations very frequently if, if I'm that, this is not my situation, but if I had a parent who didn't have a parent and I see finally my parent reunited with their lost parent, I relax. Something relaxes in me. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, so, and so that's a really, and frequently people will just turn in and go, oh my God, it's so nice to see my dad with his dad. Mm -hmm. And it feels so good or see my mom with her mom because it was what they didn't get to have in real life. Um, yeah, I have a friend of mine who's an international astrologer, but she also works with human um, design and she does this healing thing with a magnet. And she had, she was like releasing his fear gates and she would like run the magnet down his back and have him breathe. And his mom was so there. It was wild. Mm -hmm. I could feel her so strongly. I had to cry. Mm. It was just, it was really deep. So. Mm. Yeah. I just saw that we got joined by um, Debt Shepherd. Oh, remember, remind me of your name. I'm trying to, I know you joined one of my last, Greg. That's Greg. Greg says, my stepdad's father committed suicide when my stepdad was 13. He, I assume the stepdad, has been driven to work obsessively all his life. Yeah. 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 Suicide is, it's a nuclear bomb in a family system. It's, yeah. it's, it's impact is almost unimaginable. Um, so thank you for sharing that. That's really yeah, thanks, Linda. I'm going to say goodbye to you for now and let Leslie and I wrap up. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, and it looks like, um, looks like Sharon. Um, father committed. Yeah. Wow. No, that was, Oh, Oh, Sharon. Okay. So, Leslie, I, before we let Sharon in, I just want to check about time. I don't know how long you had scheduled for us to go. I'm available, but I don't know if you are. I had scheduled until 15 minutes ago, so I've got a couple more minutes, but uh, we'll need to wrap up fairly soon. Um, I do want to acknowledge at least these messages just a tiny bit. Yeah. Um, that Greg's father, stepdad, step no. committed suicide. Yeah. So he, he lost two fathers. Somehow. Stepdad's father committed suicide. So, so Greg's stepfather not yeah. only lost his stepfather, but to have a stepfather, you kind of have to lose the original father. Oh, interesting. So Greg himself. Yeah. Well, Greg's father, Greg's stepdad. Um, so that's, that's double. And then we've got Sharon who, you know, yeah. Yeah. 25, uh, Greg, Greg's stepfather at 25 got drafted into Vietnam. So yeah, yeah. We just, they're, they're, yeah. they're a little confused and bleeding into each other, but we can feel the weight. Yeah. Of family stories. They're so powerful. Yeah. Sharon, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to let, I'm not going to bring you on board just um, because Leslie and I are going to be wrapping up. But yeah. if you, if you all like these kinds of conversations, yeah. um, be sure to follow us because Leslie and I, I think, yeah, Leslie, we're going to keep doing these. Um, and I do, I, you know, I was su super interested to hear what you had to say, Sharon. I just want to respect that, you know, at some point we have to close the conversation, yeah. but we can talk more next time. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. And, and we're bringing in, um, yeah, we're bringing in a lot of really like, like right now as we're closing, it's in, so I've, I've been a psychotherapist and I'm yeah. actually just transitioning out of that. But in, in therapy land, we call this sort of the, the bomb drop in the last five minutes of session. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's like, we're, we're going to wrap things up minutes. and then here's all this really weighty stuff and not, not at all to make light of it. But as a therapist, you start to see that, especially if you're doing a 50 minute hour, I usually do a longer session. 
um, yeah. that ride about 50 minutes or 45 minutes. They're like, yeah, and it reminds me of the time that I tried to slip my wrists. And you're like, we have five minutes left in session. Like, oh, I'm sorry, this is so huge. And we don't have time to talk about it right now mm -hmm. entirely today. So all that to say, um, yeah, people are asking when's next time. All that to say, like, lots of honor and respect for all of your families yeah. and all of your ancestors. Please. And we, you know, we know that they're here with us and with you as we have these conversations. Yeah. So um, when is next time, Leslie? We haven't, we have not scheduled. We haven't scheduled it. So this, the simplest really self-serving, but also service to you thing to suggest is um, follow us. Follow us and you uh, will we'll set up something in the next 24 hours or so. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I'd be really curious, um, you know, the mix of talking about this stuff as well as doing a little constellation work very yeah. tenderly and lightly yeah. um, um, without like breaking open all of the griefs of everything we've ever felt. Right. But right. um and so uh, we, I think we probably, this is a new thing. We're going to figure out what it is. Um, and maybe we can send them with a blessing. That's kind of what I was feeling too is. Um, yeah. And, and also I, I invite us to bow to all the ancestors who have suffered so much and just give thanks for the fact for the lives of everyone who the 17 people who joined this call at one time or another. Imagine. And I would say, um, if I, if you don't mind, if I just tune in for a second. Um, <laughs> spirit does with it. So spirit does this every once in a while. I had to go through uh, getting over my shyness about singing in public because spirit will be like, sing a song. And I'm like, I'm not, who am I to sing in public? I'm saying that I'm some sort of amazing singer and I'm not. Um, but, but yeah, spirit, it gets insistent. So um so it seems like out of out of honor to to you and your ancestors and um for whatever healing this brings like i'm I'm not in charge of that, but healing whatever healing wants to happen now in this moment, that's what this is offered out of um, Om Namah Shiva. Om Namah Shiva 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 Amen. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, and thank you, Rachel, for being willing to jump into this adventure with me. Thanks for asking me. Leslie was wonderful and asked me to, to co-host these talks with her. So I'm excited for the next one. And bring your friends bring your bring your ancestors and we'll have a good time yeah yeah good night everybody blessed good evening night. <laughs>